or Excel in ME in a Google search. That's the fastest way to get to the University of Alabama website. You'll click on this website, or you can just type in this whole length of this website, but it's Excel in Mechanical Engineering. They have thermodynamics, heat transfer, thermal systems. Just go to the thermodynamics and come down a little bit right here and right here, all in one, add in for thermodynamics, which includes XDEAM, Refrigerant 134A, and R22, and it's right here. Now, if you have a 64-bit Windows, then you have to go here. Let me quickly show you a, a, what I know about finding out what system you're running. Come down to the, what do you call this in the bottom, this Start button. Click that, then come up to the Control Panel. So in the control panel, look for system. Here's system. And when you click system, it'll tell you, oh, I'm running Windows 7 and 32-bit operating system. I have another one that's operating 64. We're making that big transition. A lot of people are 64. -bit. Then I download either this one or 64-bit. I'm going to download this one. Now, it puts a 1 there because I did this trying it out, make sure I was going to be able to successfully do this. Um, but once it's there, you can click it to run. Just click Run. That will guide you through the steps to install. So it says it's ready to install. And it worked that fast. But you're not done. So now you go and start up Excel. I have 2010 on this computer. And at this point, you have to uh, locate the add-in that was put there. So under File, go to Options. How many people have done stuff like this? Go to Options under File. So right on this button, Add-ins, click Add-ins. And down here is Excel add-ins, you want to hit the button go. I didn't design this. There's too many clicks and feel like a rat in a maze. You're not supposed to see thermo tables. It's not supposed to be there because you haven't added it in yet, right? But what you would do is click browse and you would go find your add-ins wherever it made it. And I think it would probably do it under computer C, C drive, and I think it probably put this add-in folder right there. And inside it's one full file. It's a Excel thermo tables add-in. So this is where it just default put it. C drive, add-in. See that? C add-ins folder. Click that. Hit OK. It says it's already there. Do you want to replace it? Yeah. Hit add-in. Yes. Also, anybody use Solver? If you don't use Solver, you should click it and start learning what's available, right? Solver is a great tool and that's built into, but for some odd reason, you have to go and tell Microsoft, yes, I'd like to use it. Okay, and then hit OK. It fires up. It says, hey, this software was uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. Thank you. And so you have to acknowledge, yep, I thank them too every time. I'll show you how to disable that little window, pop-up window. Click on a box. Let's click on this box, D2 or C2 or whatever it is. So click on a box, type an equal sign, and then start, you know, like enthalpy, underscore, pressure, temperature, and that's this type of syntax. And then if you just scroll down, you can hit tab to finish out, or here I'm going to hit tab to finish that one out. Now I would put in a value, let's say 8,000 kilopascal and 440 degrees C, close parent, hit enter, and there's enthalpy. Now if you say I can't, come up to this function key right here, do you see this little function button? This is, explains the, the function, right? Because you it's hard to remember everything. So it'd be, oh, it says enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram as a function of pressure in kilopascal and temperature in degrees C and SI units. If you want English, you have to put a third argument in. You would put ENG. And you notice right away, it shows you the numeric value that if you hit return is going to come up. It's going to cough up 426.8. But it thinks that that 8,000 isn't kilopascal. It thinks it's PSIA. And it thinks 440 is degrees F. And it's going to return 
enthalpy in units of BTUs per pound. You can still solve those problems with this software, but I recommend just, you know, all your homework problems and exam questions, I think, not all, but most of them are going to be SI. So it's going to return 3,247 points. So you can check, quickly check things. Let's say I'm just lost. I think I know, a, I don't remember the syntax. I just think that there's some software installed to help me evaluate thermodynamic properties. We'll come up to the function key. And then come down this button because you have to scroll down to find it. At the top, it's all the financial, date and time, math, trigonometry, statistical functions. No, no, go to the bottom because you added it at the bottom. And it has refrigerant 407C, refrigerant 410A, psychrometrics, moist air, global, don't, just X steam, <laughs> steam, steam right there, okay? So if you click on the steam, that shows you all of these. So it starts the syntax, enthal, enthalpy, and here you can click and it gives you more description of that function, right? So enthalpy is a function of pressure and quality. Enthalpy is a function of entropy and specific volume. The state principle is emphasized. Give me two, I'll give you whatever the third is, right? I'll give you the other one. But you gotta come in with two. So here's pressure, there's a whole list of pressure. Saturation pressure is a function of entropy, and uh, saturation pressure is a function of temperature. Entropy is a function of enthalpy, specific volume. You just keep going, going, is this enough of them? Temperature, if you wanted to calculate temperature. Temperature sat as a function of pressure. That's a great one. T sat as a function of pressure. I use it all the time. So how did we find that? Come down here. Oh, it's already at x steam. It just keeps scrolling, scrolling more functions you probably ever will use. That's for steam. All right. So does it work? Liquid, yes. Two-phase, yes. Superheated, yes. Supercritical, yes. Is it going to give me the same value that's in my textbook? No, but it's very close. Why not? They coded up a different algorithm. You know, It's a little variation in the datum point. Okay. We'll, we'll get to chapter 11, we'll tell you how they generated the table. You'll be amazed that the, the software is even that close then. Because people still are out there refining for steam. Hey, I've got a better measurement. I think pure steam has this value for enthalpy and entropy, at this pressure and temperature. Great. Update the software. All right, so what I would do is do something like this. I always build it like this. State, I make a little, that's not evaluated, that's like a little comment in that cell. And then I say, oh, pressure and kilopascal, and then temperature and degrees C. This is my style. And then maybe enthalpy in uh, kilojoules per kilogram. I like to put what I'm, you know, as a comment, what, the, what is in that column plus the units for that. Entropy, kilojoules per kilogram, Kelvin. Let's come down here, state zero, dead state. What pressure? 100 kilopascal. What temperature? 25 degrees C. Let's get the enthalpy as a function of pressure, temperature. Now, they don't put temperature, pressure. It's lost. So there's a little pattern, like this guy comes first and second for this software. Don't worry. It's, it, you get used to it. Pressure, temperature, underscore, H2O, hit tab to finish it out. And then I can click this cell to go get the pressure value, put a comma, Click this cell to get the, and then close the parent. Enter. Right? Yeah, you wish it was that easy on exams, don't you? Uh, pressure, temperature. Whoops, I need the, whoops. Back up, come down, scroll, hit tab. Hit this cell, comma, this cell. And I think in the new Excel, you don't even have to close the parenthesis. Just hit enter. And it says, oh, I guess you need a parenthesis there. I'll close it for you. I saved a millisecond of my life. <laughs> All right, state one, maybe it's 8,000. Whoops. 8,000, come on, I can get in there. And 440. Now, the other thing is, if you select these two cells right here, see how I selected them? And then I have this little box right down there, that little black box. Go grab that little black box and drag it down. It'll take the formula and bring the formula down, true? And guess what? 
So this enthalpy, oh, I figured it's the same algorithm, but I'm going to use this new value of pressure and this new value of temperature. Make sense? How many people knew that? Pretty cool. You're good. I don't know when you learned it. When did you learn it? High school? Middle school. <laughs> middle school. All right. There was something you learned in middle school. <laughs> All right, uh, and then you can go state three. Let's say state three was isentropic. Well, I just calculate, I just bring S down like that. Whoops. Boom. And maybe it, it expanded from 8,000 to 20 kilopascal. And a lot of times over here, I'll put a little comment. I'll say, you know what? Really what fixes state two is pressure and S. Oh, for state one, pressure and T. It's a little reminder for myself, a little note I put typically right there. And then I say, oh, I need the temperature as a function of pressure entropy for steam, right? Then I click this cell for the pressure, and I put a comma, then I click that cell, close parent, return, there you go. Notice this uh, H is a function of pressure entropy for that steam, pressure, comma. Now, how many people know how to do this? I just click below and then tuck it in. It's not nice, is it? I don't know why. I, it's so hard to put, click the cell. The formula equation is covering up the cell I want to insert. So I click a neighboring cell, then I kind of grab it and move it in. If you know what I'm talking about, and you can help me do that slicker, come to my office and explain it to me. But this is my clumsy way around it. Got it? Notice I want to insert right here. Let's do this. Insert a column. And let's put quality right there because I suspect quality as a function of pressure and entropy for water. And uh, this is my pressure value, and that's my entropy value. I suspect that that's not 100%. So it's 80.4%. So I come up here, did the percentage, then the move the decimal over. You can. There's all kinds of playing around, right, to make it look pretty. Does that help? Very good. Now let's move on.